guess it's three o'clock. It made me jump the first time I did that. So this is some sort of shrine or temple of some sort that I drive past every day, not every day, every Thursday on my way to my classes. Uh, so my classes are in different places every day, different branches of OES around Ota area. On Thursdays I come this direction past this shrine and every time I drove past it the first few times I was like, oh that looks really interesting and beautiful from the outside. Uh, so I came to see what it was like um, and it's really interesting. Today it's all closed and quiet and there's not many people around. I saw a little family on their way out, on the way when I came in. But I've not seen anyone else since. Um, so... There's stuff like this all over the place in Japan. It's like, I guess, just like in England, you see churches and um, little references to Christianity everywhere, which I guess I just ignore these days because I see them all over the place and I'm used to it and it's not interesting to me. But um, in Japan, the prevailing sort of historical religion is Buddhism rather than uh, Christianity. I think it's Buddhism. I think it's some kind of branch of Buddhism, like. I've heard the term Shinto, Shinto Buddhism, maybe that's, I mean, I'm not, I've not studied this or looked it up really, so I'm just saying what I've heard, um, but I think that's the source of all this architecture and shrines and temples and things that you see everywhere. But for someone who's not used to it, who considers it different and unusual, it makes it all more beautiful and interesting for me. I don't know if Japanese people see this the same way I see Christian stuff in England, where you just sort of ignore it and it's just part of the background. I don't know if that's how Japanese people see all this stuff. I don't think so, because you often see them, they often come to places like this and... Like, Japanese people will visit places like this and... They'll, they'll go up to, like, these bell things and these little shrines and they'll stand in front of them and do a little ritual where they clap their hands and twice and then bow and ring the bell and then pause for a moment. I think they're supposed to be praying to their ancestors or wishing for good luck or something. So they have these little rituals like being mindful and thinking about your ancestors. So I think they kind of still have a bit sense of mysticism and significance attached to all this, which I guess we don't anymore in, in England, in, in the West, to our religious baggage of our past. I mean, it's not that I, you know, like, it's not that I think praying to your ancestors is going to change anything, but still there's something compelling and interesting about all the trappings of Eastern religion. If nothing else, it's just, you know, it's different architecture style, it's beautiful, it's interesting. But I'm just continually surprised about how, how, um, how common all this sort of thing is. It's everywhere. You see little shrines from any size, you know, you see like, a, just on a busy normal road, you'll see just like a little bit of, like, between two houses, you'll see like a tiny little shrine set up with all the sort of, trappings of a little shrine but miniaturised or you'll see a massive temple complex thing like this I mean these are everywhere and if you go anywhere with any remote sort of significance of like a mountain or anything you'll see something like this for definite um, and maybe I'll get bored of it one day <laughs> You know, like, if, you, if I lived here for long enough, maybe I'd find this just boring and simple and normal. But for now, I still enjoy coming to places like this. And maybe I won't get bored of it. Maybe I'll always find... something... peaceful and appealing about this sort of environment. Like, I feel like I could just sit here and 
read a book or study or just chill out. Like if I had a family, I guess I'd love to bring them here and just enjoy the atmosphere and the environment. I mean, I guess I'm trying to be like critical and trying to think about, about what I'm saying and whether it makes sense and whether it's true or not. I think maybe in England there are fam there are beautiful places. I mean, I know there are. I mean, in England, I like to go out to the countryside and sit where like it reminds me of old England and like in the middle of like the Peak District. You might see like some little stone walls and old farm buildings, or whatever. That's quite nice and peaceful. And similarly, I'd like to sit and read a book there as well. So it's not like England doesn't have beautiful places. But I think Japan has more, maybe. And certainly the fact that it's different to England makes it interesting and appealing. So what I'm saying is, I guess, if you come to Japan, you're guaranteed to see plenty of beautiful, interesting architecture and um, religious, mystical places. I went to Mount Haruna a couple of weeks ago, um, which is one of Gunma's three famous mountains. There are three mountains in Gunma which are sort of, for whatever reason, I don't know if they're the tallest ones, or, but they're, they're known as the three main sites, the three main mountains of Gunma. Haruna, Miyogi and Akagi. I tried to go to Akagi in one of my earlier videos, but it was too snowy and I couldn't get there. So I took that video of me talking about the planets on Mount Akagi. Uh, and then the other week I went to Mount Haruna and actually managed to get up to where the... There's like a big shrine temple complex on there. Um, I haven't done Myogi yet, that's on my next to-do list. But at Mount Haruna there was this whole, like similar to this, like a temple shrine place. Except on a mountain. Um, and there were these seven lucky gods. There's these so-called seven lucky gods which sometimes you can find like represented in statues around. So Mount Haruna, as we walked up, um, we saw we went past like these statues of these seven lucky gods one at a time. So that was quite interesting. Um, but it's supposedly called a power spot. I think in Japanese they actually call it power spot, um, which just means power spot. So the idea is you go to this place, in this case, this temple shrine complex on Mount Haruna, and you're supposed to get reinvigorated. It's supposed to be like, the, I don't know, the energy of the earth or maybe their ancestors is concentrated there. So that if you travel there and, and, and go there, you can reinvigorate yourself. You can regain your mental and physical well-being. I don't know. Um, I don't believe any of that, but it's still a powerful place to go to. Like, it's still beautiful and... In a way, it does reinvigorate you because just because it's such a nice place to be. Um, but it proves that the fact that there's this so-called this, there's this belief that it's a power spot, and that the people I was with mentioned that proves that they do still have these like significant attachments to these places. So it's not just like forgotten. Like, if you went to a church in England, I don't think anyone would really be that bothered, would they? I don't think anyone would be that impressed. You don't visit churches. I mean, you can go to cathedrals, can't you, if you go to, like, a country or a, a town or, sorry, or a city where there's, like, a big cathedral. You can go on a little tour inside. But I don't know how much impact it really has anymore. Anyways, there you go.